My goodness, it's like <coughs> it's thick stuff. Ah! Dad! Well, I'm not trying to. I need a bar on it. For slogan. It was not me. <laughs> what? Warning. This video may contain scenes of extreme untidiness. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to the upstairs of the dirty shop. Today, I'm going to make a cider press and I have some of the parts made already from older projects, but I'm digging through the old pile to see if I got what I need to make cider press because it's fall here in California and the apple crop has been incredible this year and we've got a lot of apples we don't know what to do with because we went out and picked like 100 pounds of them. Uh, so. I'm gonna make a cider press. I need a pressing device, which I've got over there. We're gonna go pick that up in a minute. And I need a cage to press into. Uh, you know, like basically you just make a cage, you fill it with apples and you crush them and then the juice squeezes out and you get apple cider, which is sweet. So I need a, a cage that's gonna be like a stainless steel cage or something like that. And I've got this wire I just noticed here. It's a heavy, like stainless screen, right? At least I think it's stainless. It looks like it is. So I've got this, which is a good start. I'll be able to make a, a cage out of that. Um, I might have to reinforce it with another type of container. But we got this to start with. And now follow me, and we're going to go pick up our um, press. Don't fall off. heavy so this device I made years ago as a plastic injection molder I've got this um, this cylinder here is actually it was a, it was a shock cylinder off of a, a car suspension um, that I drilled out and when I drilled it out I didn't realize the oil under these in these was under pressure so when I drilled it out it sprayed hydraulic oil in my face or whatever kind of oil they use in there under pressure it was pretty messy but basically it's a cylinder with a nozzle on the end. It's got these heat collars on it. And when you plug it in, these collars heat up, they melt the plastic that's inside of there. And then this piston would shove down through the center of that by threading this down and then force the, uh, force the, um, the plastic, this, this one might still have something in it, um, into, I can't get it apart, it would, into the mold. And I was, I was trying to make disc golf discs. So these are our molds I made for a, disc golf discs and it, it didn't really work out but um, it was an interesting experiment and so I'm hoping I can use this injection molder as a um, as a cider press instead because I've got this big huge pressy device thing and I think it'll work pretty good so we're gonna take this downstairs it's super heavy I think I'm gonna use my winch see if I can lower it downstairs and we're gonna see if we can turn this into a cider press and crush some apples Alrighty. yay mechanical advantage nice and easy now that I've got this down and I've looked at it a little bit and decided what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, uh, what I need is a screen cylinder, so I'm going to use this and make a screen cylinder. I think I'm going to go about 6 inches in diameter, and it'll be about maybe 12 or 14 inches high. I need to measure that part. And then I'm going to put that cylinder inside of this stainless steel pan that I had, and this stainless steel pan, I'll just poke a hole in the side, and the uh, juice will gather in the pan and run out the hole in the side, and I'll have a collection base somewhere for it out there. All right? So that'll go right in there with the screen cylinder on top of it. And then I need a press plate that's going to go on the bottom of this uh, to press that cylinder or to press down into that cylinder. And I'm, I already had this shaft on it from before. And I'm just going to make an aluminum disc that fits inside of my uh, screen cylinder to make the press with. And I, hopefully that'll work. And hopefully this will be stiff enough. It's a steel rod and I've got 5 16 threaded points on it. So hopefully it'll be strong enough. Um, it, won't, it won't try and wander on me and we'll be able to make a cider press without having too much effort. It's always nice to be able to reuse old projects to make new projects. I'm gonna get... We've cut this piece 18 inches wide, 
because I only want 14 inches as a finished piece, but I left a two inch overlap on each end. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this over in my break here, a couple of, just fold the edges over so that each edge is rounded and uh, twice as strong as the center points because the, the very bottom of it is where it's gonna really lose, uh, where it's gonna really have all the pressure. So the top edge, I'm just gonna, maybe I'll just fold the top edge an inch. The bottom edge, I'll fold three inches because I've given myself that extra. And then I'll have my 18 inches. So here we go, I've got this whole side stitched down. Um, it's probably plenty strong with these, with only this side stitched, especially since the compressed apples will kind of hold this against itself. So I think that that should be strong enough. I don't know if I want to put another row over here. I probably should, but um, I'm gonna take it over to the, vi the anvil now, and I'm gonna try and round out all these corners with the, on the anvil with the hammer. I've got a 140 pound Peter Wright, um, and then I've got a 500, and 60 something pound hay button. Um, this anvil is pretty sweet. It was a gift from a friend after, well, it was an inheritance from a friend that passed away. And it's a sweet anvil, they're really rare in this size. I'm really thrilled to have it. But uh, it's got this nice big horn that I can work with for this to be able to hammer this out. One of the true advantages of having a machine shop available to me, besides, um, Lots of advantages, obviously, but since this shop's been going for many, many years, and my dad is a bit of a collector of scrap and other things, we always have a lot of spare material laying around. I couldn't find a round disc piece, so I need to make a round piece. So I I'm going to just use the single point and trim it down to the right size. But I could do it at a little higher speed, which is nice, because now it's not going to fly all over the place. Probably not the best way to make a cider press, but you know. Don't say that when you're on camera. Well, don't say that when you're on camera. <laughs> all right, that's probably enough. No, nah, fill it all the way up. Well, we got it. All right, as long as we're doing it, go all the way, all or nothing. <laughs> oh, are they gonna fit? They're gonna. They'll fit. fit. Just barely. Yep, let's max it out. Okay. Okay. Good juice. Yeah. I saw a little bit. I think I should have made a smaller cylinder, buddy. This might be too hard to squeeze because I'm maxing myself out here already. We're getting stuff. I can see it at the bottom here. It's like almost clear. <laughs> it's like almost clear at the bottom here. It is. I'm raking some juice out. Mmm. Ah. I need a way to make this hold still. Um, it's not holding still for me. I can't crank on it. So my dad being the hoarder that he is, I was digging around trying to figure out a way to make an apple crusher because I decided what's really wrong with my press is I'm trying to crush whole pears. It's just not going to work. So I, I've looked at other presses and they have way less mechanical advantage than I've got. Um, so I'm thinking that the real issue is not the press pressure. It's that I don't have crushed material. So I dug around in the back and I was looking for making one and there's this corn sheller. But if you look inside of there, I think that this will shred apples in a very aggressive manner. I try with more than one, see what happens. Yeah. Brilliance. That's right. Not my brilliance. 
That part's not so brilliant. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. It's not funny. It's, no, it's not. <laughs> Fuck it. It's not up. <laughs> you just don't understand my genius. Genius mm -hmm. is seldom understood. And often misunderstood for madness. Yeah, it's often misinterpreted for madness. <laughs> well, it was a corn crusher. It wasn't like... Uh, it's kind of semi-working. You're supposed to put the corn in like this. Oh, well, if I had a hammer, <laughs> I'd crush apples with it. Okay, so here we go. Sometimes I amaze even myself. Sometimes I don't amaze myself. Um, let's see if we can get this in the right spot. Right there. Yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, right there. Uh, more pressure. Uh, no. Doesn't work 100% of the time, but it does seem to be working. Aha! Awesome. Now we're talking. Just got to get these bigger ones that fell through earlier. I don't believe it. It's a corn shredder in one direction and mess maker in the other. Okay, so now that I've got my mess made, serious mess, I'm going to try and load all this junk into the uh, cylinder here and hopefully make some cider. It's just so much easier. It's so much easier. No juice yet. It's gonna go. Oh. Oh! We got juice! Yay! Woo! It's more of an oozy juice though. It's the thick juice. I don't uh -huh. know. I need that two by four under the inch. Yeah. I don't know if this pear got stuck in it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's like. <sighs> it's thick stuff. Ah! Yeah. Try it too. I need a bar on it. For slogan. It was not me. <laughs> what? Bottoms up. It's like really thin, super sweet applesauce. Or pear sauce. It's like super thick. Look at that. Super thick. Tastes really good though. <laughs> I need to get a crossbar for that and get that done. So there you go. Homemade cider press. It's a lot of work for not a lot of reward so far. But it was a fun project. I think that uh, if I blend up my if I blend up my pears better, I just stick them in the blender or in a food processor so they're super finely chopped, then I'll squeeze them out with this and it'll be a lot, a lot better than it was with, even with that. Because that we got twice, you, you know, we didn't get anything out of it when we were just squeezing pears. And then we crushed them up in the uh, corn crusher and we got some pear juice. So I've made a super mess and some uh, about a cup of nice sweet pear juice. Very and sweet. Uh, so that's that. Thank you for watching. Never know what I'll make next. So check out one of my other videos. Hit the subscribe button there. I'll see you next time in the dirty shop. Really dirty. <laughs>